Artifact is a 2012 American documentary film directed by Jared Leto under the pseudonym of Bartholomew Cobbins and produced by Leto and Emma Ludbrook. Artifact chronicles the modern music business as it charts the legal dispute between Leto's rock band 30 Seconds to Mars and record label EMI, which filed a 30 million breach of contract lawsuit against them in 2008, after the band tried to exit its contract over a royalties dispute. 30 Seconds to Mars is shown working with producer Flood to create the 2009 album This Is War, meeting with lawyers between recording sessions. The documentary begins on a light-hearted and positive note as the band comes back from their long tour in support of their album, A Beautiful Lie, and is beginning to work on their third studio album. Originally, the band was shooting footage for the documentary about recording of their third studio album, but as 30 Seconds to Mars received a lawsuit for the breach of contract with their record label, the documentary became about their battle with EMI. There are many aspects of music recording industry being discussed in this documentary and when you realize how it works you get a feeling that many artists are being used and stolen from when signing these 100 page contracts with many many intricacies that require you to be a lawyer in order to understand what you are signing up for. I'd recommend for any musician and music lover to watch the documentary for yourselves. So, I will not go too deep in detail, but I want to address the most important aspects of the documentary. First of all, if you are not familiar with how the recording industry works, you need to know that most of the investments that a record label puts into any artist needs to be paid back by the artist. And the promotion of an artist is not cheap to say the least. Recording studio expenses, record promotion, CD distribution, music videos, touring and any other expenses covered by the record label need to be paid back by the artist through their share of profit made before the band or an artist can actually make a profit for themselves. But the expenses are so high and the deal an artist often signs is so bad that most artists end up in debt even if they are considered successful and 30 Seconds to Mars had one of those deals. Besides, there are expenses that do not need to exist, such as a breakage of CDs that applies even to music in digital format. Apart from the financial side of things, the creative aspect of artists' freedom is also jeopardized, because more often than not, the label gets the final word on what can or cannot be released. This may be more common and accepted among solo pop acts especially. In case of bands, it is slightly different, since the band usually has the ability to write their own material, which is usually why bands are being scouted and signed for their original material. But even when a band is signed, there is still pressure and interference from the record label, trying to influence the band to make something that will sell, thus make more money for the label. Apart from that, artists are usually bound by the contract that does not allow them to have any professional activity outside of their act while they are under the label, which makes any material produced by the artist a property of the record label. During the making of the documentary, EMI has tried to pull the plug on making of Artifact by not allowing the band to use any sort of music the band produced or has been working on implying that everything that band produces belongs to the record label. And of course, the most obvious and biggest problem of the recording industry today is illegal downloading of music that robs most artists, even that are successful, of making a living as musicians. The price of a song is very low, even when you consider buying one. There is an interesting quote made by Chester Bennington, reciting words of Trent Reznor. You know, you work for a fucking year on something and you put all of this time and you spend all this money on creating these songs and 
a cup of coffee at the end of the day costs more than your song. Yet, most of music listeners refuse to pay even that, which is really sad. Most don't really stop and think about these things and just assume that if a person is famous and is an artist, that means they are automatically wealthy. That may be true for the artists that belong in top 10 pop music charts, but it's a very different story for rock and especially metal acts, particularly for the bands that started out in 21st century. So often musicians have to resort to other sources of income, product endorsement deals, giving master classes on playing an instrument or singing. It is quite common on today's heavy music scene, because behind all the production that bands make, little income is left over. It is also quite common to produce their own material, rather than paying big sums to recording studios and famous producers, which begins to backfire, as it affects the sound negatively, especially in terms of drum recording. These days, drums are mostly synthetic, and that hinders the sound and neglects drummer's performance in the final material. You can find out most of what I mentioned and more if you watch the documentary, which I highly recommend. I have seen it well over 10 times and I have never gotten bored of it, as it is well filmed and tastefully presented and gives an insight on the topic of music industry. It is for me easily a 9 out of 10 documentary. The one criticism I heard someone give is if the band is so broke, how could they afford to hire someone like Flood? Well, it is addressed in the documentary and let's not forget that Jared Leto is an actor apart from being a musician, so he played a large role in making the documentary and their album This Is War happen. The message I'd like to leave you with is music gives us so much and asks for little in return. So I urge you to support your favorite bands by paying for the music you listen to. Apart from occasionally buying an album here and there, I myself began to pay for music in 2012 and I have not stopped since. This is I find to be the least thing I can do for the artists that have inspired me in everyday life for many years.